Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kino with stemwithkino.com, and today we are going to be talking about power plants and induction systems. So basically, there are two different types and then categories of aircraft that we could specifically be looking at or, or operating. And the first type that I am going to discuss are um, reciprocating engines. Okay. Reciprocating, to reciprocate means back and forth, it'll move back and forth. Something reciprocates. And we'll talk about that because it relates to the way that the engine actually operates. Um, so the first type we could be looking at is this one in which the cylinders are what we call horizontally opposed and I'll explain that in a minute. This type of ra I'm sorry, this type of reciprocating engine is actually called a radial. Uh, these are radial engines and this is a twin engine aircraft and the cylinders are actually positioned in a circular fashion as opposed to the previous aircraft we looked at where the cylinders, the cylinders were horizontally opposed which means you would have a cylinder on this side and a cylinder on this side in the first aircraft we looked at but in this case the cylinders are positioned in a circular or radial fashion around the uh, center and they're attached to the propeller via a crankshaft. In this case, we have a propeller. It is a propeller-driven aircraft, but there's actually a turbine inside, or what more or less we call a jet engine or a turbine engine. And um, let's come out to the side here. For the exhaust port. But this is a turbine engine, and this is what we would call a turbo propeller or turbine propeller. And then finally, we have a, a pure turbine or turbojet engine. So the first one we're going to talk about, as we have these two different types, which we're reciprocating being horizontally opposed or radial, and then the turbine engines being a turbo propeller or turboprop that we call it, or a turbojet like this one. Um, the first one that we're going to be talking about in the ground school is the horizontally opposed reciprocating engine. Okay, so this is our Cessna 152. And let me pause it, release the brakes. this thing off the ground and we'll be going on to the discussion in detail how the uh, reciprocating engine works. And we're off. So, the reciprocating engine aircraft. There is a four-stroke engine cycle that we're going to discuss, and um, just so we're clear, as this aircraft flies through the air, I hope you guys can see that pretty well, but air is actually flowing in here, and uh, I mean the basic slipstream of air is coming in. And flowing into there and actually assist with the cooling of the cylinders and we'll talk about that in detail later. Another thing I'd like to point out is the carburetor air filter right there. Okay. 
So. Excuse me, man. And actually, you can kind of see the cylinders, or one, one of the cylinders in there. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, air flows in there, and then it's a system of the uh, cooling. So, this is what we would call a normally aspirated engine. And we now incorporate an air filter, which we will talk about how air actually enters the engine and the carburetor and the cylinders a little bit later. So, back to, all right, I'm going to pull out that. So, we'll do a quick little flyby. And we'll go into detail with how this engine works. Okay, um, basically what we have here is actually, uh, we have a Cessna 152 engine illustrated here. And we can see how it's mounted. This is the firewall. And these are the actual cylinders. So there are four cylinders. Um, the Cessna 152 has four cylinders. And there's some more. You can see the side view. You. you can see the other side, but you can see two cylinders on this side and then uh, two cylinders from the right side. So this would be the left side of one aircraft, but the same engine. And we have two cylinders on the other side and we can see how the propeller is attached to all of this. All right, now, um, there's a video uh, that I'm gonna play. This video is by Mentor Animations and the cylinders can be arranged a certain way. And basically, that's what this video is going to go into. Um, if you guys want to queue it up with the audio, um, you can. Um, piston aircraft engines and mentor animations. But I just wanted to give you an idea because you just saw the video of the Cessna 172 actually flying through the air. And what I was just trying to get across is this is a horizontally opposed so you have cylinders on both sides and you can see how they work together to crank or turn the propeller okay here's a close in view and there's this four stroke position which we're going to go into detail in a moment here and you can actually see it slowing down and you can see how all this happens. Now this is actually happening very very fast so everything is timed precisely. You see we have a crankshaft and a cylinder and the piston that's attached to the crankshaft and the actual um, piston and this is where the reciprocating engine recip reciprocation back and forth Right, and we're going to go, don't get too caught up in, you know, the different um, phases because there's four phases that we're going to talk about. Intake, compression, power, or some might say combustion, and then exhaust. But this was a very, 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 very nice animation that I uh, found on uh, YouTube. And we'd like to thank the guys over at... Uh, mentor animations for this. So horizontally opposed, you could have inline where all the cylinders are positioned one behind the other in a single row. I think some of the older aircraft models may have been like that. You could have the V cylinder arrangement where you could have two rows arranged in a V. And then radial, which was the second uh, aircraft that we uh, talked about when we talked about recent, you could see how all the pistons work together to turn the crankshaft and then turn the propeller. Okay, so again, we'd like to thank the people over at uh, Mentor Animations 
to that video and you can type in mentor animations and piston aircraft engines if you'd like to see that video. Okay, the four stroke engine and this is by Yash Verma. Let's give Yash the shout out in our video. So, the four stroke engine cycle. As the Cessna was climbing out, this was one of four cylinders. We're going to talk about basic components. In a moment here, you have the piston, the connecting rod, and the crankshaft. The crankshaft is connected to the propeller. All right. And this was this is a very, very good um, animation. So you see the piston going downward. You see it coming up. You see a slight explosion. Or, and then you see how it pushes the charge out. So you have your intake manifold, which is just where the fuel kind of just comes in. So stroke one, stroke two, compression, power, exhaust. Intake, valve closes, compression, it's going to come up and it's going to compress this fuel air charge. Here's compression. Boom. The spark plug is time to light at a, at a very specific time when this piston reaches what we call top dead center. And this is perfectly timed. If this timing is off, it will really, it, it's a bad day. It's a really bad day. And so this is why, okay. And then you're going to see how it actually, how fast it actually happens. And this is the part I love about the, this animation. So that's probably how it's actually happening when you're like at full power. And it's perfectly timed because those spark plugs have to light off at the specific, at top dead center. So I think we might be, yeah, towards the end. Okay. So that was again from Yash Verma. Shout out to Yash uh, for making that awesome animation. Okay, and the last set, which we could have a turbo, a turbo prop, and I'm not going to look for one too long, but oh, here we go. So basically, the you have a jet engine, but it's connected to a turbo, a, a propeller. Um, you could have a turbo, turbo fan, uh, and afterburner as well. When we talk about the uh, gas turbine engines, but the turbo prop specifically. It doesn't have its pistons like we have in reciprocating aircraft. It actually has a jet engine turning the propeller. Um, I wanted to get another good illustration. And remember the four-stroke engine. It's really, really funny how you have the same things going on. And ICYM, let's give them their credit. Let's give everybody their credit. All right. Um, but this one is by Arifa Husna Binti Muhammad Aishek. Okay. Let's give everybody their credit. Um, because this is a really, really good diagram. Now, in the four stroke engines, you had intake, where the valves opened up, opened up, let the air and the fuel in, compression, where the valves closed, and the piston starts to move up to top dead center power, the spark plug lights off, and boom, and then exhaust. The exhaust ports open up and it pushes the burnt charge out. But you still have the same thing going on here. Intake, compression, power, and exhaust. So I thought that was really, really cool. One thing you need to know is that as this air is pushed out, 
these fans back here are connected to the front, the front one. So as long as we have expansion going on here, it's going to keep sucking in air. All right. Um, I saw a video by Pratt and Whitney that I'm going to go into, and we're going to play this with volume, and I hope it, it, it crosses over uh, as far as, uh, you know, um, the sound. But this is uh, by Pratt and Whitney. They make aircraft engines. Um, and let me just back it up a little bit. Fly by pushing air. Mankind has made many things that push air. One of the greatest machines that push air is the jet engine. Jet engines suck air in the front and push a jet of air out the back. That force is called thrust, and it moves an airplane through the sky. Let's see how it works. A big fan at the front of the engine pulls air around the engine and sucks air into the core. We'll come back to that outside air in a moment. For now, let's follow the air in the core. It goes into a compressor, something like many household fans join together. Each fan gets smaller and smaller as the blades squeeze the air into a tighter and then tighter space, compressing the air like you would squeeze a balloon, until that squeezed air is mixed with jet fuel, a kind of super gasoline. In the combustor, that air and fuel mixture meets a flame and shoots out the back of the engine. The rush of hot air spins a turbine. The turbine is like a windmill. It scoops up energy from the heated air and spins the shaft connected to the fan at the front of the engine. The excess hot air from the combustor blows out the back of the engine, producing thrust. Remember that air rushing outside the engine core? Together, the turbine and fan push a larger mass of air than the core ever can for much more thrust. But that extra air passing around the engine core works more efficiently if it moves more slowly than the hot air rushing out the combustor and the back of the engine. One of the first engine makers, Pratt and Whitney, recently designed a new jet engine that lets the fan push air more slowly than the turbine by putting an amazing gear between them. Pratt and Whitney calls this the pure power engine because it uses less fuel and makes more thrust at the same time. Less fuel saves money and cuts back on pollution, which is better for the environment and all living things. And when the fan moves slowly, the noise drops so much you can barely hear the airplane in the sky. It's a new design for jet engines and a new era for jet airplanes that we all can enjoy. Okay, folks, so I think we got our, our point across. So that covered power plants and related systems, reciprocating engine aircraft, radial engine, the four-stroke engine, and actually the turbine engine as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Leave comments and questions. I'm Kino with stemwithkino.com. Thank you very much.